Merry Christmas, time to get sad. I have no real outline for this video, I just have thoughts and I'm going to try to organize them on the fly, which I'm not known for. So with everyone making videos about the past decade, things like memes that have come and gone, or how they've evolved as a person, I decided to talk about a trilogy that was a big deal in the past decade and then no one talks about it anymore. Which is fascinating because usually when things are a big deal, they have a renaissance of sorts, like the Twilight series. Yes, the renaissance is still going strong. I will fight to the death to hold on to it. But one thing that fascinates me is how big of a deal The Hunger Games was. It was on par with Twilight, even close to Harry Potter at the time. But I'm just saying it was a big cultural phenomenon. And then even by the time the last two movies came out, The Mockingjay Part 1 and 2, it had already kind of died down in popularity and I chose not to watch the movie because I remember how devastated I was just reading the book and I knew I couldn't handle watching that play out in front of my eyes, not just words on a page. But this past week I binge read all three books and watched all the movies and I watched Mockingjay Part 1 and 2 for the first time. Just as devastating as I expected, I cried pretty much the entire time I watched all three movies. It just it makes me emotional, that specific series and all movies in general. I tend to cry at all movies but not in real life. You show someone tearing up in a movie and I'm gonna cry so hard it'll rival the flood that Noah's Ark floated on. So in this journey of rereading and reliving the most traumatic book series of my life, I have a few theories as to why it's no longer a staple in pop culture like it was during its prime and why it may not have the same kind of renaissance that things like Twilight's currently having and even Harry Potter continues to have and will probably revive again in the future. Theory number one is the book to movie adaptation was atrocious. Now I'm not saying the movies themselves aren't good if they were a separate product, but when you compare them to a book, and I know this is a fine line to walk because I realize there is artistic freedom and then there is sticking to book canon. These movies just said, canon who? I don't know her. And flat out ignored not just like minor details like, I don't know, someone who's supposed to have blue eyes having brown eyes, that's fine I guess, but like huge plot points. like. Peta freaking losing a leg, Katniss and Gale, like literally only you should have kissed once in Catching Fire and they kissed multiple times. That wasn't supposed to happen. She literally said like, I can't think like that right now. I can't think about marrying anybody when I'm gonna die and my family's gonna die and your family's gonna die. We're all gonna die and our deaths mean nothing. And this was peddled by of course the whole like Team Peta, Team Gale when that was not the point of the story. The point of the story was like tyrannical government killing children for funsies, um, for the entertainment of the wealthy class and for the punishment of the lower class. The book has a lot of nuances with government, the class war, a ton of things to unpack there. The last thing to even think about would be a love story. And at first I blamed the movies for this, but then later on I realized Suzanne Collins, the author of the books, didn't help much with Mockingjay because there were a lot of times during the last book where there's a lot going on with like, surviving, um, dealing with PTSD, and then also trauma still currently happening to everyone in the book, but also specifically Katniss. And then her thoughts trail to like, if I survive this, will I be with Peta or Gail? And it's like, that's not, like, I get she's 17, but she didn't think about this stuff before the trauma. You would think after the trauma, that's the last thing she's gonna be thinking about. Maybe it was just a way to escape her real life and just wanted to think about something trivial like boys. But Suzanne Collins did, really didn't help with the peddling, the whole Team Peta, Team Gale, who's she gonna choose? That's the whole point of the story, right? It's a love story. It's definitely not anything else about like children dying and killing each other for entertainment. <laughs> in a weird dystopian future in a tyrannical government, that's not the point of the story at all. Also, just side note, it's scary watching the movie and seeing people in the Capitol and then seeing how we look like that in real life now? Are we living in the Hunger Games? <laughs> anyway, the movie's just... <sighs> First of all, Katniss is supposed to be like this starving person from the lowest of the low class, like the low class of the last district. And she never looks like dirty even, even in the Hunger Games. Like it says at the very end of the book, she looks feral out of her mind. Like her hair's matted, she's covered in blood and scrapes and scars and everything. And at the end of the game, she's still like this perfect dewy flawless skin. I think she has like a little cut right here, which was slashed with a knife. You're not gonna have just a little like beauty mark right here. You're gonna, it was a huge gash that was like gushing blood down her face. 
But no, we just gave her a cute little beauty mark, and that was it. Despite the fact she was running through thorns and thickets, which in the book she says scraped up her face. Also, she was lit on fire for a time. She should have been dehydrated and starving, and she just looked the same as when she went in, which was healthy and fine. PETA was allowed to look roughed up. Like, the way PETA looked at one point was how Katniss should have looked. Same with at the end of Mockingjay. Katniss was dealing with the worst PTSD of her life and still going through active trauma in a war zone, being pushed to be this Mockingjay, and then seeing her sister die and all of this horrible stuff. And then PETA looks like this at one point, and Katniss never looks worse than this. Excuse me? Like, I know he was abused by the Capitol, but she also went through a lot and that... She just looks like, mm, maybe didn't sleep for a couple of nights and uh, is a little teary-eyed. Not, I've been through more physical, emotional, and mental trauma than most people will ever go through in their life combined. Also, Book Katniss is really not the most likable character. And there are times when Jennifer Lawrence makes Katniss's character a little more easy to stomach, actually even funny at times. Jennifer Lawrence adds a little humor to Katniss's character, a little more, makes her a little more palatable. But again, at the end of the day, it's not so much Katniss's character that's even the focus of the story, despite despite the fact it's in first person. It's the story of the Hunger Games, of the country they're in, of the districts, of the rebellion. Also, it can be tough to watch the movies when you're not having a narrator like Katniss explain things to you, so they have to kind of take some roundabout ways to explain certain parts of the story, which sometimes are cool and sometimes just take away from the story and you kind of feel like, oh, I'm, I'm watching a movie. I'm not involved in this character's life. I'm an observer. So at the end of the day, the movies weren't the best adaptations from book to movie. And I say this because it is possible to make a great movie based on a book, stick to the plot, not change things unnecessarily and still have artistic freedom. I think the best book to movie adaptation I've ever seen is the recent Great Gatsby movie with Leonardo DiCaprio. I feel like they stuck so true to not only the plot of the book, to the characters, just the tiniest details they included. Like, they maybe branched here or there on some minute details that really didn't matter in the grand scheme of things, but they really stuck to everything. And I felt like it was flawless execution. Absolutely flawless. The only thing that some people have a problem with, well, I guess there's a couple things, is that they used modern music, which... I allow the artistic freedom for that. I think that's a fine addition, not that you have to stick with what music was playing during the time that the book is taking place. There's also the point where Gatsby kind of loses his temper in the hotel room and he's always been a very calm, cool, collected character throughout the entire book, even during the hotel room scene. So that you can kind of be like, mm, but I liked it. It added a little bit of spice, a little bit of drama that would have been lacking in an otherwise very tense scene. So while it does deviate a little bit from Jay's character, that's like the only thing. If you have two complaints for a whole movie based on a book, has that been done in the history of book to movie adaptations where you have two complaints and they're minor? They're not like, oh, they skipped an entire plot point and that changes the character's motives entirely. Like in Mockingjay, Katniss was told by President Coyne that she could go on the battlefield and um, instead in the book she like sneaks on a plane and ends up there. That changes so much. That changes the motivation of Katniss going out there that changes Coin's motivation because Coin sent her out ultimately hoping she would get killed and they could use that for propaganda to make her a martyr. But instead it's Katniss sneaking out and that just makes you question Coin a little more. Like you're supposed to distrust Coin by this point, but instead she's still kind of trustworthy and it's Katniss who's, you know, bucking the stereotypes, who's like, I'm not gonna listen to you, I'm gonna do what I want. And it's like, well, yeah, she does that, but that still takes away a lot of understanding the characters and a huge plot point of Coin wants her dead more than just sending Peta out there to kill her. Also, side note, when she's speaking with the head game maker, Pultark, Plutarch? Anyway, he's supposed to show her a watch and it's supposed to flash her Mockingjay symbol on it and that literally is what helps her figure out the second Hunger Games arena, that it's a clock! Not just the TikTok, TikTok from Wyrus, but that literally that he shows it to her, which also helps her trust him. Cause she's like, oh, he gave me a heads up. Why would he do such a thing? Why on earth would a head game maker who should want me dead because of President Snow give me a heads up about the arena? Like, 
months in advance before I even knew I was going in the Hunger Games again. It's not minor details like eye color or losing a leg, which is a de- which- <laughs> Reel it all back in. Movies did not do a great job representing the books, which in turn I feel like turned people off because if you read the books and you watched the movies, the movies pissed you off. If you didn't read the books and you watched the movies, the movies really didn't hold true to what the books represented and therefore were not as powerful, therefore not as impactful. They were powerful, they were impactful, but not as much as understanding the underlying themes from the book and then watching the movie and just remembering, oh, this is why it's happening because the book told me not because the movie told me, because the movie didn't tell me anything. The movie's screwing around, just making sure Katniss looks pretty at all times. Make sure she's pretty and kissing boys or else people won't watch the movie because that's all they care about. Not a great commentary on what could happen very easily in our real lives. Like, do people realize that? That the Hunger Games could happen? Like, that's in a book, but like, when you read the book and you see how they got there and then you see at the end how they almost repeat it, make sure she's making out with every boy available and that she looks cute and pretty at all times, despite the fact that she should have burn marks, scars, and like scratches, and blood, and dirt, um, that, and mat matted hair. Like at the end of Mockingjay, the very end, like she goes months without showering. Like she just lays in the living room couch, someone else has to cook for her, and she like gets up to use the bathroom and then just like lay back down, gets up to eat because someone is cooking and fo like force feeding her basically, and then lays back down. Like she withers away, her hair gets like super matted into almost a beaver tail. Like she's saying this, I'm not making this up. And it's not until PETA comes home that she like kind of snaps out of it and literally showers and like detangles her hair and like looks sort of human again. But no, God forbid she not look pretty even during a crisis. <laughs> Theory number two, and really the final theory, I only have two theories, I've not thought this video out at all, I just wanted to talk about The Hunger Games because I could not justify spending a whole week reading three books and watching four movies and doing literally nothing else unless I make a video about it. So basically my final point as to why no one talks about The Hunger Games anymore or even wants to talk about it is because it's wildly depressing. Ultimately the final movie tries to pull out a happy ending, but at the end of the day, there is no true happy ending. Both major characters, Peta and Katniss, are scarred forever. In the book, she says she never escapes her nightmares. She constantly is reliving everything that happened to her. She can never get her sister back, which was the catalyst for the very first book, the very first time she goes in the Hunger Games is to save her sister. Everything's about saving Prim, saving Prim, saving Prim, and Prim dies. And the worst way caused by the very people she thought was helping her save her sister by getting rid of the tyrannical government because there's no other reason why president coin would send a 12 year old into battle when two bombs are going off katniss loses everything including gail she only keeps Peta, and even then Peta's not the same Peta that she kind of wanted to keep i mean yes he does heal eventually and he's able to love her and not constantly want to kill her because he was hijacked but they're both altered permanently in a negative way forever. And in the book, it took Peta 15 years to convince Katniss to have kids. So she's like 30 by the time she has kids. But in the movie, it looks like not that far off. Like they're already just happy and she's holding a sweet little precious baby. And she looks like the same age, despite the fact that 15 years should have gone by. And she's just this loving mother caring for this beautiful infant and Peta and her other child are out playing in this beautiful open grassy field which they don't mention to tell you in the books is a graveyard for everyone who died in District 12, roughly mm, 10,000 people. But she's holding this sweet baby on this graveyard and it's just like, oh, I just have dreams sometimes that aren't good but I just get through it. But it, like, yeah, that's what she says in the book kind of but there's so much missing when you don't have her narration and what she's truly like thinking and feeling for example like the fact that they are playing on a graveyard but it looks like a meadow now which is you know poetic and symbolic but at the same time it still misses that kind of dark undertone of like we're in a good place now but only after so much evil and darkness and the constant fear that it will return and that fear that never goes away despite the fact that it's been 15 years since they've dealt with any of that it's still there and it never goes away. They both constantly have nightmares. Even Katniss says that sometimes Peta kind of like 
spaces for a second. He kind of has to come back. So he kind of spaces back into the person who was hijacked, who wanted to murder Katniss. You don't really come back from that, you know? But at the end of the movie, it's just everyone's beautiful and he's out there and like, yeah, it is sort of a happy ending, but there's so much trauma in the book. Like I'm traumatized from reading it. Why was I allowed to read that at like 16? Um, it's forever altered me. You start the book with a hit of her father being dead and her being the caretaker of her family before the age of 12 to then having to basically accept that she's gonna die in order to save her sister and then have to live through the Hunger Games, kill people, excuse me, kill children, um, which no matter what the circumstance, you know, saving yourself or saving someone else is going to take a toll on you as a sane person, unless you're, you know, a psychopath and you like killing people, thinking you can save somebody and then you both like sort of get out, but then now your life is constantly in danger. Your family's being threatened. Your friends are being threatened. Their families are being threatened. Your whole life is being threatened and everyone around you, everything you touch is being threatened. And then you get sent back into the thing you thought you were never gonna have to deal with again, knowing you have no chance of survival, not knowing that the thing's gonna explode and then you're gonna get like hovercrafted out. And then the love of your life, the only person who's really can understand what you've been through and has been through it with you is your number one priority of keeping alive other than your family is now kidnapped and being held ransom and then you're being manipulated again so like your whole life you're being used for some other purpose and then now even though it's the rebels you're still being used to push their propaganda and you don't really get that much of a say in it because you feel so guilty for the lives that you've caused loss in like she's just always being used by everyone and everything you finally rescue the love of your life and then he wants to kill you because all of his memories of you have been altered to make him believe that you're an evil mutt created by the Capitol. Um, and you've seen him be physically abused on live TV. And then he actually does try to kill you. He tries to choke you to death. Oh yeah, and then like at the very end, she's supposed to assassinate the president and she does, but it's the wrong president, but like it's on purpose. After being used and then having to watch her sister die like on purpose. So basically like the fate of the nation is on your shoulders when you are so... Like in the book, they didn't show this very much in the movie, but like in the book, she was like shaking like a leaf before she went up to kill President Snow. She's been so traumatized. She was mute for like three weeks. They didn't show that in the movie really at all, but she didn't like speak for three weeks. They had to force feed her. Like they had to basically just keep her alive because she just curled up in a ball. Sometimes she would roam hallways and then like get tangled up in some curtains and then just lay down and just not move for like hours at a time. We just show her looking strong and brave and going out there and I'm gonna kill President Snow and then I'm gonna give a little smirk before I pull it and actually end up killing President Coin when in reality she was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill myself. Where's my pill? But she was like, resigned, like gave up on being alive. It's not a happy story. Basically, that's this whole point. I rambled for a long time, but it's not a happy story. Yeah, it ends with like her and Peta being in love and eventually having children and like not even happily ever after just coping. We'll never get over it, but we'll freaking deal with it. And we'll tell our kids eventually because they're going to know what's up because the school teaches them that that happened. But we're never going to be the same people. We're always going to have nightmares for the rest of our lives. But you know, it's cool. Our kids play on a graveyard of all of our old friends and family um, and other people in a district that was bombed because of our own actions. But it's cool. Cool, 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 cool. No doubt, no doubt. Anyways, I think we should revisit The Hunger Games. Um, it sucks that I feel like they can't really remake the movie because Jennifer Lawrence kind of like is the staple for Katniss Everdeen. But then again, I mean, things change and they could always remake it and they could always find someone to do a good job. She really did embody a lot of the good things about the books, the things that I'm glad they kept. And she is a phenomenal actress despite what people think or like make fun of her as a person in real life. I think she's a phenomenal actress and she did do a great job of what she was given as far as the screenwriting goes. I don't blame her or any of the actors or actresses for how the story turned out. Also, uh, hold on, I should have mentioned this earlier. Finnick, was, he died and they just like moved on. But I think we should take a minute to remember it. I don't know, something at the end of the decade to be like, oh yeah, remember that dystopian future story? We're really close to that in real life. That could happen. And every day we kind of get closer to something like that happening. And I think that's important to consider <laughs> moving forward is not letting that happen and rewatching it, maybe rereading it with a new lens of, this is not a love story about Katniss and Peeta or Katniss and Gale. It's really not even a story about Katniss Everdeen herself. 
It's a story about a possible future that we should do our best to avoid. And parts of it kind of are happening. Woo! Okay. I just wanted to depress y'all real quick for the holiday season. This is my Christmas gift to you. I wanted to make you sad. Um, cause I'm sad all the time and I want to spread it around. Uh, thank you for watching. My Instagram and Twitter are at olive oil orange juice. The link has been in the description for a year, but no one seems to check that. I have enamel pins for sale. They're on Etsy. I also have a Patreon. There's like exclusive live streams, which are basically like hour long podcasts of me. If you like that kind of stuff, I guess. If I don't see you before the new year, cause who knows what I'm going to do. Uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Nah, I'm kidding. Peace. I'm